I said when I started this, uh, I'm Philip Baker, and uh, this presentation is titled Chasing Your Family Roots. I've listened to several speakers today. We really have a good cast here, I can tell you that. And I realized I should have probably been the first one in the program because I'm starting as if we know nothing. Um, now, most of these people know a lot, so we'll go past that. But anyway, as to how I approach looking at what I do, because from the beginnings now, um, I've written six books of family genealogy, the 350 to 500 pages each. Uh, we have, and I've got a copy just to run around uh, to look at, we have written a family cookbook of recipes. I just finished, and it's at the bindery in Utica, Nebraska, as we speak, a binding of my book called Reflections on My Life. And that's about 270 pages, a little bit of what we heard in one of the speeches, if you were there today, of what to put in a book about yourself. I didn't know any of those facts. I just sat down and wrote what I thought my family might like. And so that's what I do, I've done. I've given talks at various groups. When we started, we, I'm referring to myself and my wife, my wife sitting here on my right second, uh, we knew really nothing about our family. And it was before ancestry was even thought about. If you did, if you go back that far, uh, before it was here, it was called Border Bund, Border Bund out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They sold themselves out and went on down the line until Ancestry bought it for a commercial product. I didn't ask today uh, about Ancestry. There's an Ancestry expert in here, I think. Uh, is Ancestry at this time have a genealogist on their board? Does anyone know? You can go to a certain area and it does have genealogists on there that will help you with people. Mm -hmm. like yes, sir. Sure. As far as the people that run the business, the last I looked, there wasn't a genealogist on the board of how ancestry makes money. So you have to remember this is a money making operation. And uh, it's very good. But just remember that in the background that they don't come from the world of genealogy, they bought it. The world of genealogy <laughs> and when you post your family tree on there they're happy as clams because they can just swipe that and those names and stick them into that 22 million we were told that's in their profile and that expands their profile that's how they operate now what's private is private and what's public is public but that's the way they work so i started in 1998 uh, I had done no genealogy. I knew one group, two grandparents, and that was it. Uh, ancestors didn't exist. But my wife and I traveled to lots of courthouses, I don't know how many cemeteries, uh, filming gravestones, because you couldn't find anything unless you went into the county clerk's office in that county, which may or may not have a record. Nowadays, it's a, a lot of it's a slam dunk. You just put it in Google or whoever else you'd like to talk with on, on the internet and put in what you want, and here it comes. So there's a lot of information that's so much more, so much more readily available than it was at that time. And then if you want to go to the next step, they have all kinds of genealogists that you can hire. Uh, we have hired uh, ancestries. I spent a lot of money with ancestry, I can tell you, to find us in Poland, in Silesia, and I got sick. Mm -hmm. I knew more than they knew when I got it back. So don't, you, you just don't know what you're getting, but that's the way it is. It's just the way it is. So I said, everybody's a genealogist, and we all sat here uh, doing that, and I, I used to. Tell people what you do is in the winter time when you're doing nothing else, get out that big box of full, uh, pictures that your mother or your grandmother left, put them on one side of your chair while you're watching 
Hallmark. <laughs> and you look at that and say, do I know them? Do I know them? And if you do, write gently on the back of it their name. Do you know where they're from? Write that on there. Do you know about the date? You did and put it in a box on the other side. And you just keep doing that until you have time to sit down and begin to put it in your system. But at least it starts that. And if you never get back to it, maybe your children or your nieces or nephews or whoever gets <coughs> love these pictures uh, can follow this and say, well, you know, Uncle Phil did this. Well, Aunt Betty knew these people. And that helps a lot to, to mark the information, particularly in old programs. When we started, we had lots of old letters. You know, people wrote lots. They just they just wrote. So you can get one of those, and they talked about their family, the kids, and all of that. And they all were close by. Nowadays, I think that's going away. We know how to tweet. We know how to Facebook. We know how to email and text message, and nothing is saved. So in two generations, I think from now, we're going to have a real problem trying to establish a lot which is fairly present now. And just to kind of keep that in mind, that if you get an important email in from some aunt or uncle, just make a copy and throw it in that same box that you're saving, because there's no other record out there of it, of what they said. One of the best ones for one of my family lines was what we call the Yankee family fortune letters, 1910 to 1920. Germany was in hyperinflation. Money was wheelbarrow size to buy bread, they said. But there were articles in the newspaper saying that if you could prove you were from Germany and send them the information, there was a million dollars for you for that in Germany. Well, if that doesn't sound like the Nigerian things that came around here about 15 years ago, <laughs> well, I, you don't know, but that's what happened. My family, that line of my family was clear. They live everywhere in this country and they started writing to each other and listing all their children. They hadn't seen each other for years and years, maybe decades. Fortunately, those letters, most of them were saved, and that's how the family was reconstituted in the early 1900s by letters that went around actually for a scam, which they never got, obviously. But that's that's what's out there for us for us. I think that'll all go away. Cemeteries are now, you don't have to go. Uh, Betty and I went to I don't know, how many cemeteries. Maybe 180 more. You just go to find a grave, put in the name, and if you don't find it, it probably isn't there because they couldn't take a picture. You know, people go around and they take pictures and post them, which is just wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, some of the cemeteries have the information you need. They might even have an old bit, some of your family, that's in their files that you can't find. That's, a, that's really helpful. Remember, county clerk offices are a great source of information because that's where most things are recorded that we do that's important. You know, <coughs> Mary, Mary, Ty, all that kind of information, our, our land that we own, it may be in their files. One of my wife's family, I, I had put this together and we had one person missing. I knew who the person was, but I couldn't, I couldn't connect it from here to here, but I knew it was there. I called the county clerk's office in a small county in northeast Indiana. Called where it was. And I always entered, I always open that discussion. I'm a genealogist. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't too much of a genealogist, but that's what I opened up. And I'm looking for information on Stephen White. And this lady said, hey, come on. there might be something here. 
I looked at their records online, and they didn't have anything. She said, let me go. What do you see, man? I don't know. She came back, you know, how you're on hold now, and there's nothing there. And she comes back, and she said, I found his records. They're in a box in microfilm on the top of our filing cabinets that she had remembered because she had worked there for about 20 years. So we go there. You know, from here to there. Oh, what's... And sure enough, there they were. The information you wanted. Who they were, where their children. They died in an epidemic out there. The kids were all orphaned out. Not orphaned out. They were all uh, uh, given guardianships until they got old enough. And all of that was put together by a lady that happened to remember this box that if you saw it looked like your recipe box at home on your counter. And there it was. So you never know where you're going to find information, even if it's not there. Even if it's not there. Because not all things are filed. When families came to this country, they came in groups. Rarely, rarely in the early ones did they come alone. They lined up a group of their friends and let's say, let's go to America. And they may have come in in the 1700s. They may have come in the 1800s. The closer it gets to present day, they would be more inclined to come by themselves and their families. So they will be just there. But early ones, you've got people that came in here in the 1700s. Uh, they probably traveled with a group of similar people, usually the same church. And you can't find your relative, but you can find a whole lot about John Doe. And then you can put it together. So always remember they, they travel in groups. Most of these programs, you know, that you, you have to buy them uh, Family Tree Maker. That's the one I use, but there are two or three more uh, out there that are quite okay that you can put your information in to record. It. I did mine on Border Bun. I knew so little about the computer that I barely got it in there. And I went about three months and I put in what I knew when you're born, when you're married, when you're buried, and where you're buried. And then it came up one day the file is corrupted. I had no clue what corrupted man. <laughs> so I couldn't do anything. So I called Borderbone, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I said, Did you help me? They said, Well, send a CD of the uh, of what you had. So I put them send up there and they said, We can't, we can't unscramble it. You'll have to start over. Oh, <laughs> so I said, yeah. That was about three or four months of stuff. So technically, we didn't know nothing at that point. That was hard. Nowadays, I back up everything to the backup to the backup. I have a hard drive backup in my computer, plus the hard drive, of course. Then a backup that's there. And then there's a three terabyte unit sitting down on the floor that backs up all of that. All up because you can't, if you're doing this work, the first thing to do is just say, if this gets messed with, can I restore it? So please do that. I learned so hard. You can ask me. My ancestry.com, that's what I've been using. Yes. And I don't know how you down, download your family tree to back it up. In other words, if I, if I quit paying that fee, I lose my tree. Yeah. Well, it's there, it's but I have, to be in the, I have to be in the subscription to use it. No, you can use it, but. That the thing that's not there, if you don't have a subscription, is the copy of whatever records you have um, recorded. But it will have a record that you have that, that you had that. But you can go in without a, a subscription and use the access to them. But, but you don't feel like you need to have it backed up anyway? I, mean, well, I don't know because I don't. I don't. I never. I have never downloaded anything from the internet straight into my files. They come into a side file, and then I sit down and I, I start analyzing them to make sure I have a pretty good idea that this person that put that together knew what they were doing. 
So I, I've done this now since 98, and I've never loaded. I know lots of people do, so they send me a file of theirs, and they'll have 15,000 names. Well, you know how they got them. They just said download in their file, and there they are. And they may be perfectly fine, but I just have been afraid of that from that first experience. Um, so I don't, I don't download. I, I just have the, the one of the hard things with beginning this is it's just overwhelming. You know, you think of all these people back there that you don't know about, and it'll go off this way, that way, and it's hard to keep track of that. But the, the programs really help you. So you need to buy into one of those programs. You're just going to have to come up with a little bit of money. Not necessarily ancestry money, but certainly a recording system of <laughs> some things to keep track of. It. Yes. What do you think the family search? The, the family search app? Family search did a lot of good for me early on. Uh -huh. Uh, one of my families, that, that's how I found my family. I, I thought I knew my family, but I couldn't prove it. And family search helped me because I went online, found the name I was looking for, and I found a man that had posted a lot of information that looked like, it just looked like what I read now. So at the end of family search, if you look at that site, there was the name of the person that put that information on that site their name, and their town. Now, old time days, and you say, aha, I'll just go to a white page search, put in John Doe, and up comes his telephone number. Well, you know what's going on nowadays. About half don't have landlines, because that's all that's recorded there. And uh, so it's harder to find them. You can buy that online. You can get to that, but you have to put some money in sometimes to find them. But I found a man, called him one day and told him what I wanted to know. And I said, I think, I think that's our, my line. He said, you just found it. You just found it. And so that just launched. That was the first book I ever wrote. And uh, that launched it. But it came off of family search at the end of the family search. Opposite side. Another family line of mine. And this group that was trying to get a buck out of Germany, I should say a mark out of Germany, they had all this information, so they made up a family mark. So they could get it back far enough to say they started in Berlin. And the way they did is they put Michael 1, Michael 2, Michael 3, and Michael 4 is the one we knew that was here. That one was known. And if you go today and look that line up, there they are. All of that is vicious, vicious. 10, 15 years to find out what the real story was. Put it out there. Here's the other one. If you, so if you took that and pushed the button, put it into your system because it happened to fit, all of that's not, it's not good. Hmm. Right. Yeah, because I, I keep going back and back and back, like I get to Jesus. I mean, I get to some things that just oh, doesn't make sense. You, you can be up the show many things. That's just the way it is. Because people, most of us in this country came from poor people. A chunk of our society came in against their will. A big chunk of our society, my immigrant ancestor, came in uh, indentured. He spent seven years in Philadelphia working for a person. And then they were given a little bit of goods and sent out and said, you're on your own. So they had a way to break away from that. But they were terribly poor. They just were poor. If you have ancestors that you know back then, in the 1700s, uh, they probably had some money because they could come here on their own. And uh, there are those lines, of course. So there's two sides of who comes and who goes in this country. So just kind of watch for if there's, because I noticed the one I was just looking at was several Williams, and then it did get into like like a Scottish. Yeah. But I mean, well, but you don't know, like, you don't like know you said with the links, 
Sometimes you, but you can do it on your Sometimes you need a professional to help you and they all charge money. <laughs> right now we're trying to run back uh, a um, a line from my wife that she came into the DAR under the Daughters of the American Revolution and, and uh, she was accepted and we have a certificate, all that kind of thing. And then I found about two months ago who I think are the ones that are hit of that man, which I never knew. So we're starting on that. And yesterday I got a whole lot of information that I can now prove one more back from what came to me, but that took a professional to find it because I could not find it, even though I knew what I was kind of looking for, because a lot of things are out there now. It's a different world. And if you, if you just keep trying, you may, you may find it and you may not. Although I was just told as a man, if you watched the exhibits, if you went through there, there was one for SAR, one man sitting there, good friend of mine, and he said, Bill, we have an issue. And I said, what's the issue? Well, now the person that my wife came in on the DAR under, they're not sure, this means Isaac, kind of a nice name, Isaac. We're not sure if it's this Isaac White or if it's this Isaac White. And they're not taking any Isaac White things at this instant. Mm -hmm. If you're there, you're fine. <coughs> <laughs> so now we've got to go back and find others that she came in under, and I think I will. But that's just what happens as time goes by because there, there are different people in the same place. They use the same names over and over. Any other questions? I didn't say, I don't mind being interrupted, but I can handle that. When you're looking for help, remember there's somebody out there that's doing what you, you want to do for sure. It's just for sure. And so if you can find that person or hook into that, that will be really, really helpful. Sometimes somebody's written a big chunk of your family history and you don't know it. I had a young man who contacted me and His last name escapes me now, now, so I'll make up his last name. He said, he said, I'm Joe Weinstein, and we're related. And I said, you know, Baker and Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> we're sure about this. So anyway, he said, well, I was adopted. And he said, I finally found my uh, birth certificate, and on the birth certificate is a man by the name of Samuel Baker. He said, oh, well, just a minute. I think I have a Samuel. Let me take a look. And sure enough, I did. So I sent him back what I knew. And, you know, and I had that money all the way back. It's a of mine. And I don't know how many months went by. And the next thing I know, this man is into the SAR. But it came because he had run across me somehow. And you know when you have Weinstein and Baker, it, it just doesn't fit. But it was uh, it, it worked just like it was supposed to. But it came off of genealogy. It's the only one I've ever been involved in that something was found in that manner. I'm sure with DNA that's coming kind of now, we're going to see a lot more of that. But it didn't happen at that time. If you're in Shawnee County or in this area, you know, we have a lot of wonderful sources. The library here is, is really good. The genealogy center is staying at the old time and they'll help. They are really, really good. And so you can go there. They have all the programs that you need to use if you don't want to spend, I think, Ancestry is what, three or four hundred dollars now, I believe, to get that package deal of theirs each year. And they'll remind you when it comes due. Yeah. <laughs> when they're all there, take it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why right. you'll, yeah. you'll get to know. Well, we've just taken it out of your bank account. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of library is very good. They're they're quite helpful, particularly in the early years for me. The state church. I don't know if any of you have been there, but the LDS State Church. It's out uh, on the West Topeka, just past the what used to be our shopping center, and uh, it's uh, there south west of there. Most of their material you have to order in, but it's, uh, they do a nice job. 
the Topeka Genealogical Society, that's out in Indiana, for those local who know that, they have a lot of material, particularly for this area. They're separate from the library and they have their own facility, but they're very helpful. All professional researchers that I know, um, all, all charge, and that will vary. You know, they the most expensive I've encountered is ancestry by far. I'm working with a man now, and uh, that's looking at this mine that I talked about. That's in Maryland and Delaware. I found out that's a pretty good place to research if you happen to have somebody there, because those two states weren't battered too badly. By the wars. They kind of were real places, no one paid a lot of attention to them, particularly. And they've got a lot of records. Once you get to Virginia, it's a different ballgame because you know, we went through there with uh, the British went through Virginia very heavily. Um, we did with the Civil, uh, uh, Civil War. We just, we just shot up everything was in sight. And so a lot of records were lost at that time. How do you deal with the, with the language stuff, though? I mean, do you have somebody? Who do you? I, I don't speak. I, I speak some German. Most of the older German, though, is not quite like they teach now. So when you're seeing that, it's not like you were taught if you had a high school or a college German course. So it's harder to read. It's like old English. If you have anybody that has those, you read that material and you think it's from a different world. Uh, so I usually have to have somebody read it for me, try to find someone. What would you suggest? You say you find somebody. Well, in old English, I use my daughter because she's an she's English major and such. That, and she uh, spent a lot of time learning how to read uh, old English and because it's written different. You know, they have the two S's. German does that too. You know, an S doesn't look like an S. looks like two F's. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's who I use there. Do we have any resource here in Tupa? That, that, I'm not, that I'm not aware of. I assume there is. Germany is a very difficult, we've talked a little bit before, just a sideline. Germany is a very hard place to research from if you go back very far. Um, the lady that did the DNA work this morning for us said that they don't want to do their DNAs, that you cannot get much DNA out of Germany. And if you happen to be in the Alsace area of France, you know, that's right along Germany, uh, it's just about zero. They, they, for some reason, they don't want DNA and they, the, the present people, present people don't want to do DNA. So she said in, in her business, and you know, that's what she does for a living, part of it. And it's very hard to find if you're doing that. You know, that area, that's what we know that we do is the Palantate area. It's the area up and down the Rhine River. And that was an area that had pacifists. So the pacifists of that time in the world, say 1700 to 1775, they kind of congregated there. They were different. We know them here as the brethren, uh, the Think of the two or three other Schwarzenbergers. They gather there and they tolerate each other quite well. Well, then France was on one side, Germany on the other, and they didn't like each other. So one would go across this, this area of pacifists and they would burn their buildings, burn their crops, shoot them if they wanted to. And then pretty soon the others went the other way. And they just went back and forth and back and forth. And that's when in this country, William Penn uh, was given the land uh, in Pennsylvania. And he went over there and told them that if they could get here, he would give them land. Well, now we have all these people trying to get out of there, and they don't have any money. Any money. So they get on a ship on the Rhine, and if you've ever seen the pictures of the Rhine or photo of the Rhine, there's a castle built. Every time you went by, the guy came out and wanted to toll. So the captain of the ship would take and pay your way. And by the time you get to Amsterdam, now you're getting another ship. 
that captain wants some money. And they would sign up a contract. I'm going to work for seven years when I get to America. And they, they were said to be one page contracts and they tore them in half. So it looked like this like you tear a piece of paper from side to side. And they were called indentured contracts because it pointed somebody, I suppose, at 14. I don't know. But that's what they came here. And those were sold when they landed in uh, Philadelphia or New York. And somebody bought their soul for a period of time. And but they had no money. They they came to the village. Anyway, as they got there, then they, they moved on out of those areas. And now you're trying to follow, you go up into the area of, say, Northern Virginia, Philadelphia, Upper Maryland. Those people, many, many went straight south. They went as far as the Appalachian Mountains, down Interstate 81, as we know it now, if you've been out there driving around, that was the great, great wagon road. And they headed south. And some of them split off and went off into Tennessee, Kentucky, but most of that first group went clear south to North Carolina. And that was called the Watauga, Watauga area of North Carolina. Again, a lot of them were Scots Irish and, uh, and German. They got along pretty well. But if they, when they fought in the Revolutionary War, if they were given any land, it was over in Tennessee. So they get this piece of paper and says, you have uh, 300 acres over in Tennessee. Now you have to go to the mountains and go there and live. They had no um, <coughs> civil structure, no way that you could record a deed, a land, a land grant or anything. They had to go all the way back across the mountains, way out on the uh, flatlands of North Carolina to New Bern to record that. So that group wanted to form a state, and they formed for a brief time the state of Franklin. It's an area that's between Tennessee and Kentucky, right along that border. And they had a government, and if you look up that, that state of Franklin, they had a constitution that the basics of it are just like we put in this country about 15 years later. They were very forward seeking. They didn't ask Ben Franklin. They could use his name. They just called it the state of Franklin. North Carolina came over and they said, we don't want any part of this and beat them down. They didn't have much of a fight. It was all over. But that people, that group of people were, were quite used to the elements. Many of them were Scots-Irish and uh, that in that part of the world. Online resources I put down the bottom of my paper or various things. If you have any questions about them, just ask me. What I'm going to do is for just a bit, I'm going to pass down and you can kind of skim. These are some of the some of the books. Instead of written six of these, you get some idea. This all began with just what I've been talking about. Just began. Um, I can tell you that we're going to make a book. Genealogists like books that are in spiral bound because they'll lay out flat and you can read them either. If you want it for your coffee table, I'm passing one down on the back side over here. It's got a hard cover and it looks like it belongs on a coffee table. <laughs> So it, it, that, that has the information and the structure of that, except for the stories. I wrote a story on every person that I knew, but in the front of the book, you can see the family tree maker print out of all this stuff. Well, well, did, did you have somebody somewhere here? I saw it. I didn't know if you had a book about this. That's family tree maker. Okay, that's what you When you put a name in there, every word that went in those books, Names, dates, times, oh. is from my finger. <laughs> Every word. I made this quote right there. 
Oh, my wife made that quilt. My, my wife quilt. You know, Red and white. <laughs> she's got about 25 of those scattered around there. They're, they're, they're so cool. Wow, that's awesome. Mom? Yes, I know a lot about the mom. My grandfather was from Mexico. Okay, and from that before they came to Kansas? Uh, I was. Yeah. Tell me about it. Is that John Mark? John Mark. Yeah. The other well, and the cemetery in LD could go up there to that land came from the Betty's three four-time great grandmother was Amelia Ma, yeah. a lady I would have loved to meet this way. I found official documents of Amelia Ma. That was her God, the name she died with. I don't know what her real one was. She had her name six different ways <laughs> on official documents, church records. Uh, land records, uh, census records, and then there's a real amount. Now, if you're going to follow that family back, you go look up Reuben Mock. You write that now, Reuben Mock. He came out of Virginia, and he's a he's a, a, a Revolutionary War person. So, if you're interested in that, you start there. You'll you'll probably come. If you went from there to Iowa, you can't be anybody but the same much that Jesus. You, you might mention a man that said she did some long hair for abuse yeah. or, 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 or the man that would not talk to you on the That's right. My wife reminds me of some funny letters. I, I had an old letter from one of her line, and they used to write, if you've seen any of those letters from the late 1800s, they just wrote. <laughs> there are no captives. There's no punctuation, <laughs> and it just goes on maybe for two pages. And, you, and we have to read and say, What is that? Did you mean that? And that's the way it was. The, the, the information is wonderful, except you have to really spend the whole time. And then I used to call people. Uh, you know, I was kind of cheap in those days. And uh, I had cell phones. And so on Saturdays and Sundays, I would call people that I thought might know something. And I called a man in uh, up in Iowa that I thought he had some memory, know something about part of the mine I was looking at. And his wife answered, and it's about 5.30. And she said, uh, yes, uh, let's say it's John. John's here, but he he's watching Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes no telephone calls. No telephone. And he did. So I called back and we got a lot of information in it, and they were wrong, but that was more on And then another story called and I, I started talking a little bit more about the specifics. You know, I want to find out about John Doe and Jane Doe and Emily and all this. And the phone goes, <laughs> he hung up on me faster than you can imagine. Yeah, you know, you sounded like a salesman. <laughs> So I just went back and I said, I am still there, and I think we're related. <laughs> you know, the nicest conversation ever. Oh, she hung up on me at an instant because I had a message. You have to be careful if you're calling people. I'll start out with, with the hit. I think we're related. Most people are talking to you as a rare genealogist or an interest that will not talk to you. It's just, that's my experience. And the last thing in that, the women have the records as a rule, which now makes it tough because they may marry, have a different name, and all this goes on, and you're trying to find them. So the men that I found that had records were the last son that hung around after everybody left the house, and he got them. Just remember, you're looking for, if you're looking for photographs and stories and all that, you're going to have to probably look for the women of the family because they take care of them. The last couple of things I'll pass around after we did this, we took this same thing and we just finished a wonderful book. And if you look at my books, I titled them all Movers and Settlers. 
movers and settlers, and then whatever family. Well, this one's movers and set, settlers and recipes from the heartland. And it's a, a, a book that we put together. It came out this year. And then the last thing that I'll just show for here, all of this came from genealogy. So if you look at these books and just flip them, you don't have to really read anything, but you can see in some of the pictures that were there, they all had a spin off from genealogy. That's what kind of taught me. And this I title Reflections of My Life. And so uh, they're, they're in, said earlier, Utica, Nebraska, as we speak, being bound by a binary that's in that city. To my knowledge, well, there at this time, there are no binders in the state of Kansas. Hmm, really? So if you want a hard copy like it's going around here, you can't, you can't do it. No, 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 okay. Those were made in uh, Kansas City. There was an old, old binary there when I started, and they quit. And there's, I couldn't find one here, but there's a big one in Utica. You have a website. Oh, yes, I didn't say that. If you write down, if you want to know a little bit more about this, I have a website. It's called, and can you believe it, Movers and Settlers. It's all one, all one word, you know, with an and that's spelled out, Movers and Settlers, no, no apostrophes, dot com. And that'll tell a little bit about us and some of the things and, and the family. It's all that information, these various books. Then I update that maybe every oh, three to six months. I go in and update the information if I have new facts. Where did you German site come from? The Palin today area is best I know. I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to find that. Still don't know. I have a, I know the families that they lived around here come from. Uh, let's see, there's some books. Oh, I'll give you two books. Virginia, if you have Virginia families, they have it over here. There's a three book, three volume set called Adventures of Purse and Person. Adventures, maybe plural, of Purse and Person. That's a Bible of early Virginia. And if you happen to have family in there, that's accepted by all the genealogic societies as the Bible. And another book from Maryland is the old person. Adventures. And person. First, money and people. And person. When you stack them up, they must be 10 inches that one hell of a Make this kind of stuff look like I was great. And then there's a book in Maryland called The Old Monica C. M O N O C A C Y. And if you have any of those German people, you want to pull that one out to see it. That your name happened to be there. Okay. I thought you said it was Virginia. Well, that was Maris. What did you call it? They have the whole thing. He is following my family. Any questions? If not, what I have to say, I'm actually a cheese. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next